Hey everyone, Bex here to wrap up our The Struggle is Real series. This has been an awesome few weeks talking about relationships and sex and dating and pornography. And you've had so many good questions that you've put into the Q&A box or submitted online. We've absolutely loved it. And we'll get to answering those questions in the coming weeks. But this week, we want to have some real talk and real discussion about singleness. So, Another story from Teenage Bex days. It's grade seven. There's this boy, he's super cute, and I have a major crush. And not like a, we talk all the time, we're good friends kind of crush. Like a, I can barely make eye contact with you kind of crush. Have you ever had one of those? Maybe just me? Okay. But honestly, the same was true for him. It was obvious that we liked each other. So at the end of school one day, we meet out under the tree. Our school had this giant field right by the parking lot and literally one tree that was right between the field and where the buses did drop off in the morning and pick up at the end of the day. So we meet at the tree. So the bell rings for the last class and I start making my way to meet him. I had so many butterflies. I was convinced that I was floating, not walking on my way to the tree. I don't remember much from the interaction, honestly, besides, will you go out with me? and me saying, yes, and then, okay, I need to get on the bus. (laughs) What I do remember is the ride home. I was filled with dread. (laughs) The butterflies in my stomach were immediately replaced with nausea. I felt sick, so gross, and I I realized that all this time that I had a crush on this guy, that I wasn't actually ready to date. I didn't want to be in a relationship. I had idolized the idea of it, but Despite my feelings, I was in no way ready to act on it. So I get home and I jump on MSN Messenger, which was our version of texting back in the day, okay? And I break up with him. So here I am, feeling like a failure, because <laughs> my dating life had officially started, but my track record was a pathetic two hours. <laughs> a number of years later, friends would compare stories of dating and ask, how many people have you dated? And I'd be like, Two and a half? Because I mean, could you even say that we dated? Probably not. At the time, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed in myself. Disappointed that after so much time of having different crushes on different guys that the feeling was finally mutual and then I couldn't even commit to it. I felt like I was the weird one that didn't feel right about dating. I didn't understand my own emotions or feelings, and worse yet, what I thought I could bring to the dating world didn't seem to line up with the expectations of the dating world. Maybe you've had these expectations given to you too about dating and relationships, but they aren't exactly what you want for yourself. Or maybe you've never even really thought about what you wanted when it comes to dating and relationships. What you need to know is that these thoughts are normal. This series is all about getting to the truth about things like sex and relationships. And one thing that I want us to be able to have some real talk about is the choice that we have when it comes to being in a relationship or not. At some point, we've all experienced disappointment in relationships, right? I mean, maybe yours wasn't a two hour relationship, but maybe you've had a crush on someone who didn't return the feeling and then you felt rejected, disappointed or or sad. And maybe that was a crush you had in kindergarten or maybe you're living it right now, or maybe you're a serial dater and heartbreak is just very known to you. And this may not be true of everyone in the room and that's okay. But maybe for some of you, it feels like it's easy for anybody to get a date except you. Or maybe you feel like everybody cares about getting a date and you just aren't that interested in dating right now or maybe ever. It seems like being in a relationship is something uh, a lot of people want for their lives, either right now or when they're finally allowed or are ready to date. And honestly, that sort of makes it seem like that's the way things are supposed to go for all of us. Like dating and being in a relationship is what you're supposed to plan for. Almost as if there's one path to take and this is it. (laughs) Is it really an option to choose something else for your life? A lot of times it feels like the answer is no, doesn't it? (laughs) 
whether it's because of the rules or expectations put on us or just what we've seen around us. It's easy to think that. When it comes to something like dating and relationships, there's really just one option. And if we don't choose that option, if we don't want to be in a relationship either now or as we get older, well, it can feel like somehow we're, we're gonna miss out. We might start to wonder, is it okay if I never date or get married? If I choose not to be in a relationship, will people think there's something wrong with me? Or what if nobody wants to be in a relationship with me? Is the entire point of life just to get married and have kids? <laughs> Will, will God be disappointed if I don't do those things? Can God still use me for cool, amazing things if my life doesn't include being in a relationship with someone? If you found yourself asking questions like these, then I am so glad that you're here. When it comes to the pressures, expectations, and choices we have about things like dating, here's what is true. If your path in dating and relationships doesn't look the way everyone seems to think it should, that's okay. In fact, I can guarantee you that if dating and relationships are never a major part of your life, you definitely don't have to wonder if you're missing out on big, amazing things. How do I know? Well, because of what Jesus says. And we know that knowing Jesus changes everything. One of Jesus' most famous sermons is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And while the entire message is pretty cool, pretty amazing, there's one part in particular that I think can help us understand what our focus in life should be all about. So let's take a look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. And it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. I love the way that Jesus puts this. When we're following him, the one and only goal for our life is so simple, to reflect who God is to the world around us to be a light that shines God's love, to live so boldly and brightly that nothing can hide it. Because when we make that our focus, people can't help but notice. It's like a light in the darkness. When we use our gifts and passions and lives to reflect God to the world around us, people will see it, they'll notice, and maybe it will lead them to turn their light on and start following Jesus too. That's the point. As followers of Jesus, our one and only goal is to live our lives so that the light shines out of us. When we make that our focus, we know that we're not missing any part of the point of life. Guess what this passage doesn't say? It doesn't say, once you find a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it doesn't say, you can't do this until you turn 15. It doesn't say, once you're ready, it says, you are the light of the world right now. Presently, in this moment, you're already there. It says, no one puts a lamp under a basket, meaning you're burning bright right now. So don't let the world's expectations of where you're at right now stop you from being who God created you to be. Maybe it comes as a surprise, but Jesus' ultimate plan for your life isn't for you to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. That might be part of your story, but it's not the reason for it. Jesus calls us to live a life that shines and reflects God. And as people made in the image of God, we can do that all on our own. We don't need a significant other or a relationship to show God to the world around us because we already have God's image in us. Can marriage reflect the image of God? Absolutely. Can a single person reflect the image of God? Absolutely. Are you missing anything if you choose to be single? Nope. God has planned an entire life for you, including every day leading up to being in a relationship and every day after. Don't miss out on the entire story waiting for one chapter. You were made for so much more. There have been incredible leaders in history that have made a huge impact on the world who were single. 
Jesus, the Son of God, who came to save all of humanity and who performed miracles and changed people's lives, was single. John the Baptist, who was a prophet that came to tell the world that Jesus was coming to earth, was single. Mother Teresa, who devoted her life to serving the poor and won a Nobel Peace Prize for her work, was single. Paul, one of the most famous leaders in church history who wrote a lot of the Bible, was single. And bonus fact, he actually wrote about how being single, like he was, can actually be the best option. God can use single people to do incredible things. While relationships are a part of life, they're not the point of life. Sure, they can add great things to our lives, but we don't need romantic relationships to live the full, meaningful, awesome life Jesus offers us. See, if we're choosing to live a life based on what Jesus says it's all about, then we're choosing the best possible life for ourselves. We're getting the point. You can have people ask you on dates or people ask you to be their girlfriend or boyfriend, and you can still choose to be single. Just because somebody likes you doesn't mean you need to be in a relationship with them. It's about what you want, not what they want from you. Dating, choosing to be single right now, choosing to be single for a while, or maybe even choosing to be single always. No matter what you choose when it comes to dating or being single, when you choose a life that follows Jesus, you can know that you won't miss out on anything that God has for you. That's why when you leave today, I want you to feel confident that you can choose to be single. And when you realize this, you recognize that dating and relationships are a part of life, but they're not the point of life. The point of life is to reflect God's love to the world. And because of that, you have a choice. And that choosing can start right now in middle school or high school. You can choose to date when you're allowed to, <laughs> or you can choose to be single. No matter what anyone else's expectation of you is, you can choose what's best for you without wondering if you're missing out. So to wrap this all up, one, you can choose to be single. When we know the kind of life Jesus calls us to live, we can choose what's best for us, no matter what everyone else is doing. So if you don't want to date right now, great. And if you don't want to be in a relationship ever, that's great too. You are made in the image of God on your own. You don't need a relationship to complete you. And you definitely don't need one to experience the fullness of life in Jesus. So if you choose to be single, choose it with confidence because you know you're not missing out on the point of life. You're choosing God's best for you as you go after the real point of life. And two, you can have a better outlook if you choose to date. Maybe you aren't dating right now, but you want to one day. And when you do, remembering that relationships are just a part of life and not the point of it will help you have a better outlook on dating. Instead of seeing that other person as your whole life, you'll know they're just a part of it. Instead of looking for someone to complete you, you'll know that you're already complete. And if you eventually choose something else, like to break up or be single, you'll know that you're not missing out on anything just because you aren't in a relationship. And three, you can celebrate what other people choose. Here's the truth. My life may look very different from your life. In fact, I'm sure that it does. What Jesus leads me to won't exactly be the same thing he leads you to. And honestly, that's amazing because each one of us is made uniquely. For some of us, that might include things like relationships, and for others, it might mean choosing to be single. Neither one is better than the other. And while others may make us believe that we should want to be in a relationship, we know that's just not the case. And because of that, we can celebrate what other people choose for themselves. We can be better friends and supporters of their choices when it comes to dating and being single when we see them choosing what's best for their lives. So no, you don't need to wait to start living a life that follows Jesus and shines a light in the world. The truth is that singleness is a legitimate option in life. 
And whether single or not, our lives should be to seek after Jesus and live the life that he's called us to, regardless of our relationship status. So as you chat in small groups, let's encourage one another to go after the real point of life. Let's be there for each other to support one another and celebrate when you choose God's best for your life, whether that's dating or being single.